everybody. Uh, nice to see a big crew of farm to school folks and supporters on this Zoom. This is the first webinar uh, in the New Hampshire Farm to School in New Hampshire School and Youth Garden Network webinar series, which I'll be talking a little bit more about uh, towards the end of this presentation. Um, but today I'm going to be talking mostly about New Hampshire Farm to School, um, the program, resources available to you, uh, show some uh, programs from around the state so you can see how some farm to school programming is happening, um, resources to share, other ways that you can get involved, and then um, finally talking about some of the other upcoming webinars that are being planned between now and uh, April. So um, I'm going to try to take questions as we go. Um, and so please put your questions in the chat. Uh, Colleen Stewart is going to be helping uh, with the chat and uh, I can't see the chat personally. So she's going to have to help me um, with questions um, or comments. Um, and hopefully we'll also have some time at the end. So with that, welcome and welcome to New Hampshire Farm to School. Oh, no, I'm not advancing, sorry. There we go. So what is Farm to School? Um, Farm to School enriches the connection communities have with fresh, healthy food um, by working with school food service directors and teachers um, and changing education practices in schools. And there's also a Farm to Early Child Care program. So you know, farm to school can be implemented in pre-K through 12 programs. Uh, it helps to empower children and families to make informed food choices. It can help strengthen the local economy and contribute to vibrant communities by making school food service investments in the local farming community. Um, it's different. We're going to see several examples of different programs in the state. So. A school can have a garden or they can be serving local food in the cafeteria, they can be composting, they can be doing all of them, they can be doing one of them. So it's all different by the location and what the school community wants to do. But generally, um, it includes one of three core elements and that is procurement. Local foods are purchased, promoted and served in the school cafeteria. Education, students participate in education activities related to agriculture, food, health, and nutrition, and school gardens. And generally, we're talking about edible school gardens where they're actually growing vegetables and herbs and, and fruits. Um, and they're learning about them um, as an outdoor classroom experience. Um, and sometimes that food ends up in the school cafeteria as well. So those are, you know, and what those look like can be very different in the schools too. So it's really up to the schools to decide um, how, what kind of programming um, they would like to do. Farm school programs support health uh, by uh, introducing uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and other items to kids at an early age helps develop healthy eating habits. They can improve the quality of school meals by having local and fresh and whole produce and other items going into the meal programs. Of course, healthy eating habits helps control uh, obesity. Um, and it has been shown that students in schools with farm to school programming eat twice as many fruits and vegetables as the national average. Education helps to increase consumption of healthy school meals, means all kids are ready to learn. It provides opportunities for hands-on community-based learning that can engage all learners. Um, and of course, uh, a well-fed child is a better learner. So therefore they have better learning outcomes. The economy, um, by uh, making school food investments, by supporting farmers, fishermen, and other food producers, you're, you're supporting 
your community economy, your county economy, the state economy. Um, and those are federal dollars that can support the local economy. Uh, better food can increase student meal participation. If you have better quality food, you might have more students actually purchasing school lunch instead of bringing lunch. Um, and it also can create workforce development and job creation opportunities. And for the environment, if we're investing more in our farms, we're keeping local land in farming and open spaces, um, reduces food transportation. So if you're getting something locally, it's not coming from Florida or California, um, and it's not actually being grown to be transported across the country. Uh, a lot of foods that we buy are grown, they're you know, some sort of hybrid that are made to last on a truck or a train across the country. Um, and they're not actually grown to support taste and nutrition. So that's helpful, uh, reduces that transportation and can reduce food waste. So if the kids are eating more food, the less is going in the trash and more food is from farms is being, is being sold versus um, um, having to glean it or compost it. So there's a lot of excellent benefits for participating in farm to school programs. So New Hampshire Farm to School is a program of UNH's Sustainability Institute. Um, it started in 2003. I have not been there since 2003. I've been there since 2009. But it, it started as a program, um, it came out of a, an organization called the New Hampshire Coalition for Sustaining Agriculture that decided the state needed a farm to school program. Um, and so they were um, the implementers of that and the and UNH Sustainability Institute uh, took it on um, in 2003. And I've been there since 2009. Um, so the program serves schools, communities, and farms throughout the state, facilitates implementation of school gardens, local food being served in school meals, classroom education, and building community connections. Uh, we do this by offering professional development opportunities uh, to teachers and school food service or webinars like this, uh, developing resources, providing technical assistance to farmers, building networks, and collaborating with other organizations across the state. Um, so I, this uh, graph is some statistics on food purchasing by schools um, over a couple of years. So we didn't have a ton of, of schools respond, but um, there is growth in the amount of money that is being spent on schools uh, based on from 2014 to 2019. Uh, there has been increases. Um, so I have been working on that and trying to um, make create opportunities for schools to buy local food. And um, so that was a good benefit to see that, it, that actually that is happening. And the top local food purchases by New Hampshire schools are apples, or it's always every year, it's always apples. Um, lettuce, tomatoes, squash, cucumbers, carrots, and potatoes. I mean, they do purchase a lot of other items, but those are the top purchases that um, New Hampshire schools are buying. And these are some of the partners uh, that I work with. So the farm to school staff, in New Hampshire Farm to School is myself and Colleen, who works one day a week, basically, on Farm to School. So in order to make a lot of Farm to School happen in the state, um, I have to partner and collaborate on projects. And these are just some of my partners. Um, and we, we are doing you know, various things. And I will say that uh, we also have a Northeast Farm to School Collaborative, so people like me and all of the other Northeast states. Um, we speak monthly, we collaborate on projects, we share resources um, and help each other with our programs. There is also something called the National Farm to School Network. So again, people like me in every state. Um, there's somebody even in Guam and the Virgin Islands that are doing farm to school. So it's a pretty robust network. Um, 
and there's a lot of resources that the National Farm to School Network has, uh, which you can find at farmtoschool.org. Um, so they have been a great partner in, in helping to create resources and support state programs and, and whatnot. So um, still involved with them. Um, so really, you know, farm to school happens at a school level all the way up to the national level. So it's pretty robust. There are lots of resources. Um, and so it should be pretty easy to get started. And there's obviously a lot of support. We have a good turnout for this webinar. So thank you. And um, hopefully we'll continue to grow. So I wanted to show um, a couple of short videos of some of the farm to school programs uh, that are happening in the state. If you were interested in starting a farm to school program or expanding a farm to school program that you had, um, how, like, what could you do? So in New Hampshire, we have started a couple of regional farm to school networks. So if you're in the Lakes region, the Monadnock region or the North Country, happy to connect you to those uh, networks. Um, and those networks are there to provide support um, help each other, learn from each other. Um, so they're kind of just getting started. So if you want to connect to one of those, you can reach out to me. Um, we have a new, something called the New Hampshire Harvest of the Month program, which I'll go over in a little bit. So that's a little, um, that's an easy thing because it's resources for the classroom and cafeteria. If you wanted to start a garden, uh, the New Hampshire School and Youth Garden Network could help you with that. And um, there are lots of resources on how to start a garden. Starting a composting program. Um, one of the webinars in the series is, will be all about starting a composting program. So if you wanted to decrease the food waste at your school, whether it's just in, in the cafeteria kitchen or you wanted to go further and, and, and get kids to learn how to compost their leftover lunch lunches, um, you'll learn how to do that. We also created the Indigenous New Hampshire Harvest Calendar. Um, so if you're doing Native American studies, you might wanna integrate that. There's also a 13 moons curriculum developed by the Indigenous New Hampshire Collaborative Collective, which um, I will show the website for that too, um, where you can find those resources. So there's some really good new resources to strengthen any Native American studies programs you might be doing. Uh, if you want to start buying local food in your cafeteria, you know, let me know. It can help help get you going on that. Take a class on a farm field trip. That's a pretty easy thing. Um, sign up your fourth grade to participate in school to farm days. So those that's a program of the New Hampshire Ag in the class, and they set up these school to farm days all across the state, where fourth graders go to a farm. They get to experience a lot of different things at the farm. Um, so it's a really fun, it's outdoors. And so it's always a fun event. Um, and then plan an activity for farm to school month, which is October. And I'll, I'll be going over some more resources for that as well. So October is farm to school month. It's a national thing. So it's federally recognized thing of, as farm to school month. Um, we celebrate it here. In New Hampshire, so we have some New Hampshire specific resources, but there are also resources developed by the National Farm to School Network, and you can go to their website and find um, all kinds of things. You can print stickers and coloring pages and get ideas for how to celebrate. Um, New Hampshire, we've kind of broken up the month of October into celebrating different components of Farm to School. Um, and we update the materials every year. So we were looking at, you know, if you're doing a school garden, you're celebrating your school garden. Um, if you're doing things in the classroom, you can celebrate during the second week. School lunch heroes, if they're serving local food and highlighting the importance of um, cafeteria workers. 
celebrating culture, recognizing the diversity in our schools um, and celebrating that diversity. And then we have a week dedicated to farm to preschool programs. So look for that um, next October, start planning um, and, and join in. So the New Hampshire Harvest of the Month program is a 12 month calendar. Uh, each month there's a different food or foods featured. Um, we have a few extra things. Uh, March, we also have maple syrup. In June, we also have dairy added. But every month, um, you know, there's a poster that you can download. There are um, classroom activities, school lunch friendly recipes, things that you can send home with the kids so they can have it at home. Um, so it's, it's a well-developed resource um, that's fairly easy to adopt. I know a lot of school cafeterias, you might see this, um, the New Hampshire Harvest of the Month logo on school menus or see like, oh, today, this month is kale month. And you might, so you might see that on school lunch menus across the state. And all the materials are free. Um, go to the New Hampshire Farm to School website. You can find all of the materials there that are available for, for downloading. So this is an example of some of the materials. So January is parsnip month. So you can see some of the materials that are available. Uh, the one on the left is the uh, uh, information sheet you can send home with kids to their parents so they can try some parsnip recipes or learn how to cook with parsnips. Um, the handout on the right is part of the classroom connections component of the program. So really learning about parsnips and um, doing some activities. There's you know science, there's history, there's nutrition, there's art, there's all kinds of components of the program for, for every month's <laughs> featured vegetable. Again, it also includes um, recipes suitable for school food service. There's a recipe I know in there for parsnip, parsnip hummus, which is delicious. And we have this newly created resource, the Indigenous New Hampshire Harvest Calendar. So this is highlighting the foods of the Abenaki, the indigenous people of this area. Um, so some of these foods are readily available to schools, others are not so much. Um, the Three Sisters, uh, which is something school garden programs like to try to grow, which is the corn squash and beans. So that's one of the featured items and fiddlehead ferns, which are becoming more readily available. Um, and other items that the Abenaki ate and may still eat, including milkweed, which I actually tried milkweed because um, I have some in my yard. Um, so that, you yeah, know, it's good. It's not something I'm gonna run to, but it's good. <laughs> Um, maple syrup, deer, bison. We used to have uh, Eastern woodland bison here. No longer, but that used to be a food. Um, blueberries, sunflowers. So not just the seeds, but you can eat, eat that sunflower head. Um, salmon, shellfish, ground cherries, or husk cherries. Hazelnuts, sunchokes, otherwise known as Jerusalem artichokes, acorns, grouse, wild onion squash cranberries and dried and preserved foods. So it's a similar calendar to the New Hampshire Harvest of the Month and that um, there are classroom activities to go along with each food. Um, there are some recipes. Again, not a lot of these foods are gonna end up on a school cafeteria because they're just not accessible that way, but some of them are. So, and this calendar we've broken up by season. So summer, fall, winter, spring, of the different foods that were available during different times of the year. So we're heading into, we're in winter. So we have blue hubbard squash or, you know, storage squash, winter squash, cranberries, which can last uh, preserved foods like meats or you know, dried meats or dried fruits or anything like that and wild onions. So 
so this is what some of the program materials look like. Um, so as a winter thing, preserve food. So that was certainly a needed food component during the winter. And so the activities are learning about the different ways to preserve food um, and some dehydrating fruit, you know, adapting it to times like, can you put it in the oven or you can put it in a dehydrator. Um, and it, so it has other, other recipes for preserved food. So this is some, what the program materials look like. So it's um, again, uh, classroom friendly, homeschool friendly, school lunch friendly, some of it, um, and also can be found on the um, New Hampshire Farm to School website. Then I just wanted to show the uh, Indigenous New Hampshire Collaborative Collective, indigenousnh.com is their website. And so they've got the other resources. They've got a teacher's guide on um, indigenizing your curriculum. So if you want to take a critical look at what you're teaching, you can use this guide to help you, um, you know, adjust things if they're not quite right. Um, and it also gives a lot of uh, the do's, like these are good resources, these are not so good resources. So it's definitely um, a useful guide for teachers, free download. Um, and then the 13 Moons unit lesson plan. So they're not quite all finished. I know um, the UNH education students are working on those to finish those. So as soon as they're done, they'll be here. Um, so there's all different kinds of, of activities, not all of it food. Um, but some of them are food, but not all of them food. So um, looking at the 13 moons calendar uh, versus our, our lunar calendar, but 13 moons. Um, so there's activities for each moon. And are, they also have a few other you know, videos here, making cornhouse dolls, making pemmican, which is known as a traveling food. And you can also find the... Um, indigenous harvest calendar on this website as well. So it's a good resource if you're looking for um, more indigenous uh, materials to share with your students. So the webinar series, again, starting with, with today's, the next one is uh, basic classroom hydroponics, January 31st, uh, farm to school in New Hampshire. So we're gonna be taking a, a, an in-depth look at four farm to school programs around the state um, and the, the variety of farm to school programs and the different activities that are happening um, in these four areas. Um, school food and local food procurement. If you're wondering how to get more local food into your schools, uh, we'll be we'll be talking about that. Garden and classroom connections. If you you want to increase your knowledge of how to connect your classroom to the garden, um, learn some new activities on how to do that. Join us on March 14th. School composting, um, I talked about that earlier. If you are interested in starting a compost program at your school, come to this one on, on the 20, March 24th and, and learn how to do that. One of the presenters is um, a elementary school in Tamworth who's been, has a, had, had a compost program for many years. So they have a lot of experience on how to do um, composting and they actually compost on their school grounds. So I know that that is always like a sticking point with schools who may or may not want to actually compost on school property. Um, and then another one happening in April, troubleshooting the challenges of school gardens. Um, so bring your questions. You know, if you've got a pest problem, you've got the soil deficiencies, you're, you've had, don't have any luck growing tomatoes, you know, whatever it is. Um, you can get some answers to that. That's going to happen in April. 
um, exploring and understanding New Hampshire USDA farm to school census data. So the USDA uh, takes a census, basically a survey of school food service, um, and they do it in every state. And so we're going to be working with USDA to present New Hampshire um, so we can dig more into that data. Um, what, what are schools buying? Do they have gardens? You know, what are the ways are they implementing farm to school kind of thing? Um, and then another uh, workshop in March on seed saving. Um, so if you are, it's one of the activities in your garden is you wanna learn how to save seeds. We'll hear um, from Strawberry Bank, who's one of the presenters in, in, from Portsmouth, as well as a, a school in Maine who's had a seed saving program for a number of years and how to go about doing that. And then another one we're gonna add is funding your farm to school projects and programs. Um, so that sometimes is an issue of like, how do we get started? We don't have any money. So learning all of the creative ways to fund your farm to school projects and programs. So we hope that you will join us for some, some of these, whatever topics are of interest to you and whatever role you have in your school or community. I'm sure there's one of these that will be helpful to you. So keep, you know, we'll be sending out, we'll continually send out um, information about these, the, particularly the ones that are not uh, quite set for the date and time yet. So there's a couple of other up upcoming opportunities um, for you. So there's the Northeast Farm to School Institute, which is um, an event that happens at Shelburne Farms in Vermont. If you've never been there, go. It's right on the shores of Lake Champlain, the big former I, I Rockefeller or Vanderbilt estate um, where Shelburne Farms is located. So they have their whole um, Vermont feed program is located there. So they run a farm to school institute, which invites school teams to go for three days um, to this beautiful location and learn about farm to school and plan for your own farm to school programming. The application period is open right now. Applications are due February 14th. So if you think you have your school uh, and you have some other farm to school folks in your school who may want to go to this, um, get your application in. I think Colleen can put a link to the application in the chat if you're interested. Um, it's really a fabulous experience. I've been several times. I've been there with several New Hampshire schools. Um, so it's really, you know, worth it. It's really, it's you learn a lot, you eat well, you get to stay on the property. Um, so there's a lot of, of really good reasons uh, to go. It's fun. Um, but I don't think it's free. It's not, but it's not terribly expensive either. So there might be a $600, I'm not sure what it is this year, team fee to go, uh, but it's totally worth it. Uh, Maysler, 13th, if you're interested, the New Hampshire Food Alliance has their statewide gathering. So basically that's the a state food system event. Um, I usually do something farm to school related at this event, um, but it's a good place to go if you're interested in, in food system topics, food access, um, food hubs, um, policy. So all kinds of topics on the broader food system in New Hampshire. So that is happening in Plymouth and it's kind of an indoor outdoor thing. Um, so it's trying to be COVID safe there. Um, if you're up in the North Country, there's a North Country Farm to School Network meeting, February 22nd. Um, the contact for that is Ziani right there, Ziani Ahia at unh.edu. So she's helping to oversee uh, the establishment of the North Country Farm to School Network. Um, the New Hampshire School and Youth Garden Network is doing a mapping project. If you have a school or youth garden and you wanna get on a map, like a GIS map, 
um, you can go to that link and get your school garden information on there. And as soon as we have enough um, responses to you know get a decent map, we'll we'll be getting a, a map. So you know one of those maps where you can click on the the point and the pop ups of the school garden. So like you know information, a photograph of your garden, where the garden is, you know favorite activities that you do in the garden, garden contact. So it's meant to be um, a resource for all the garden practitioners so they can learn and share with each other across the state. So that is, that is um, something that you can do to get involved as well. Um, USDA Farm to School Grants. We've had a number of school districts in the state and other support organizations receive these grants. Um, we just had three applications go in. Uh, the, the deadline was January 10th. So we had three applications go in from the state to support some farm to school programming. Um, the grant program comes around every fall, usually in, in October. Um, this year, the grants were due in January, the year before they were due in December. So it's usually a October to December timeline. Um, so they have one and two year grant programs. So if you think that uh, you're ready to, your school or organization is ready to expand your programming or you wanna, you've gotten some stuff, but you'd really like support in, in getting you know, more things in place. Um, the turnkey grants are good, um, particularly the action planning. Um, so those, those grants are up to $50,000 for one year. So any amount you can go for $5,000, but they're up to 50. And then they have two year implementation grants that are up to 500,000. So say the first year you did an action planning grant, then the following year you could write the implementation grant to actually implement your action plan. Um, so even though they go up to $500,000 now, those are really meant for larger school districts and bigger projects. So if you're a small school district, you probably um, don't need that amount of money, but they are up to $5,000. So if anybody's interested in doing that, let me know. I've facilitated and helped a number of schools and organizations write these grants. Um, so if you, if you think you might wanna do that, next fall, let me know. Uh, right now, the New Hampshire Farm to School Network has a bill in our house. It's um, a farm to school reimbursement bill, House Bill 1657. The bill, if passed, would support a um, reimbursement from the state. Uh, so we're asking schools to you know, spend some of their federal dollars on the purchase of local food, and they could get back up to $1,200 um, per school uh, per year. Um, so that is a house bill. And if you want to be in support of it, you can email the house education committee. Um, but tomorrow we also are having an informational webinar from 12 to one. And Colleen, if you put the link in the chat, for, to register for that. Um, that's tomorrow, 12 to one. Um, so we're gonna be talking about the bill, the, the legislative sponsors will be on there. Um, we have these incentive programs, this is what they're called, um, um, are happening in other states. So we have Maine and New York coming on to talk about their farm to school incentive programs. So you, you can see how they're working in other states. Um, so it's a chance to hear more about, about how it would work in New Hampshire um, and ask some questions. Um, so if, again, the link's in the chat. If you wanna email your support to the House Education Committee, you can do that. So um, we're not sure how it's going. The House Education Committee has to you know, vote to say yes or no. And, um, if they say yes, then it goes out to the full house for a vote, I think. I'm not 100% sure on the legislative process, um, but at some point it would have to, 
if it passes through that, go to the finance committee because we're asking for money. Um, so it has has some hurdles to get through before it's, it could become a real thing. So we do have a lot of good support for it um, across the state, but we could always use more. Um, and, and so look out for you know, action alerts or um, ways to help support the bill in the coming weeks, if not months, because again, I'm not sure, sure the timing of everything. So that's an exciting thing that's happening. And I think, um, you know, it'll help incentivize schools to purchase more local. It'll help support New Hampshire farmers by making an investment in their, in, in New Hampshire agriculture. <clears throat> So basically, a, you know, a school has to spend, if they want to get $1,200 back from the state, they have to spend $3,600 um, of their federal money in order to get $1,200 back from the state. So if every school did that, that would be a lot of money injected into New Hampshire agriculture and the New Hampshire economy that where a lot of this money um, leaves the state because schools are buying food from you know, food that comes from California and Florida um, by, and that's getting, you know, distributors that are out of state. So a lot of, a lot of federal dollars that come into the state are not spent here. So this is one way to um, incentivize um, spending that money here. So that's my contact information. If anybody has any questions, um, wants to follow up with anything um, and happy to take um, any questions at this point. I see there's a lot of things in the chat, but I'm not sure what they're all about. They're mostly me putting in links, but um, <laughs> everyone feel free to put any questions in the chat or you can raise, use the a hand raise function. That's always good if you wanna ask a question. Stacy, it's this is Gary Sheehan. Hi, Gary. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to bring up the free seed project, but uh, <clears throat> I run a free seed project for master gardeners from master gardeners to school and youth organizations throughout the state. Um, we are probably going to um, put up our order form by February 1st, and that will run through April 1st, possibly longer. Um, this year, we collected a huge amount of seeds. We have over 28,000 seed packets that uh, we've collected and organized and will be distributing to for orders throughout the state. And uh, I will also be taking special orders. So I can put my contact information on the site. And um, I'm not sure when it's going to launch. Um, but there, there is a, a link that you click on to and create an order form. And then we'll mail seeds out to you. Um, within a couple of weeks so great thanks. yeah thanks gary so that is a program through unh master gardeners so you can either find you know google unh master gardener free seeds and find uh, gary in the program um, and it's been a popular program i know like you get hundreds of orders from across the state you know not only school gardens but homeschool gardens and youth gardens um, as well can apply. And I think it's up to 15 seed, free seed packets this year. That's correct. Even, yeah. So, so last year we, we um, distributed uh, 515 mail orders. Um, plus we do special orders. And so far this year, we also have collected a lot of bulk seeds um, for that would be used on farms. And I've distributed over a hundred pounds of seeds to New Hampshire master gardeners that run special projects through farms. So anyway, contact me if you're interested. Thanks. 
Yeah, and we'll, um, well, New Hampshire Farm to School and some of the other school garden network partners will also share that link once uh, that is available. Um, uh, Pierre had a question. Did you want to unmute yourself, Pierre? Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for doing this awesome uh, webinar. It's super informative. And we were just, uh, we're a nonprofit farm in central New Hampshire, and we were looking to supply food to some of the schools that we actually work with in other educational ways. And we're just wondering, like, what the best way to approach those schools? Is it just approaching them directly and trying to encourage them to, you know, look at the, um, some of the opportunities they have with the government to get funded for those programs? And so just wondering what you guys thought was the best approach to do to go about that. Can I ask what schools are you talking about specifically? Bradford Elementary School in Bradford, New Hampshire and uh, Curisarge uh, High School and Curisarge Middle School um, in, the, in that area. Okay. Are you, is this Curisarge Food Hub? Yes, yep. <laughs> yeah, we're Curisarge Food Hub. I'm the farm manager, I'm here with Julie. And yeah, yeah, we're looking how to just uh, be able to provide some food to um, to some of the schools around around us. Yeah, so I mean, the best approach is just contacting the school food service directors. I mean, those are the purchasers of the food. Um, and happy to uh, get those directors' names to you if that's helpful, if you don't know them. And so in terms of like pricing and stuff like that, what, how does that get established? You know, like if we're selling like, you know, I, I don't know, do they differentiate between local and organic? Is that even part of the discussion or um, is that no. something that that's not part of the discussion? No, not necessarily. It's um, the pricing is going to have to be an agreed to price. Um, I think that, you know, again, you, if you want to, to do this, it's to begin to establish relationships with the school food service staff. Um, so you can understand what they're looking for um, and what pricing would, would be. And so that grant government that you guys were talking about, the $1,200, is that to help pay for that kind of access to local food in the schools? Yeah, so it really is meant to incentivize the schools to purchase local food. Uh, so if they want to get that money back, they're going to have to buy local food. Um, so yes, so if it passes, and even if it does pass, it, it wouldn't, you know, it's not going to get implemented next school year. It would, it's going to take a little bit of time, like might be the following school year. Um, but yeah, I'm ha you know, if you need some support in talking to school food service directors in the Kearsarge and Bradford schools, I'm happy to help you do that. Thank you. That would be awesome. Okay. Again, I'm here as a resource in the state of New Hampshire um, and will help you try to get started in whatever farm to school work that you want to do or get you connected to networks or whatever. All right. Well, Thank you all. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. And um, I hope to be in touch with you.